Hey, Billy and Michelle from Permapastures Farm. And uh, today we're, we're gonna do an update on the mountainside uh, gardening that we did before. Now there have been a few changes. As you can see, there's actually food growing here in this box and you've harvested, what, what did you get out of here today? Uh, like micro beet greens. I was thinning the beets out, so I just right. took them inside to eat them. Right, a giant bowl of them that I just had a minute ago and it's in my belly. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's stupid. But anyway, um, we're out here, and since the last time you saw the last video we had, there were four boxes, this one and the three behind me. Well, since that time, we've actually put in a series of what? What was it? Like four more? No, five more boxes. Two more about the size of this, and then three more and every single one of them are right on the edge, and I know it's hard to tell in this frame, every single one of them are right on the edge of pretty much a cliff. So you better be on, you better be on your toes when you do this kind of gardening because you're gonna pay the piper in, in the worst. Yeah, I can see me out there not paying attention. You gotta dig me out of the weeds because I was picking lettuce. So uh, yeah, this is not a place to be messing around. <laughs> I mean, you can't just do your casual gardening here anyway. So today we're, we're to the point where, I mean, how long has it been? Maybe a month? About, about four weeks, maybe. About four weeks and astonishing growth and incredible everything going on here. So I'm going to kind of step back a little bit and let you explain what we have going on here. Okay. So here we are, one of our, um, one of the many beds out here. And uh, so based on what I'm looking at, it seems we have broccoli, beets, and what is this? Uh, we have potatoes, blue potatoes. So we planted broccoli, and we, which grows obviously above the ground. And then we interplanted beets in between the broccoli plants, which will take advantage of the space underground. And then we also planted dill on this half, or uh, potatoes on this half of the bed. They work well together. And we do that so that if a, if a bug invades, they don't completely wipe out a whole bed. We mix up the, the plants. Now we have, a, we have a series of different things. Okay, so this is above soil. Is this like a mini version of a food forest? Uh, yeah, you could think of it. So we could look way. at this as the overstory and perhaps this is the understory, right? Right. right. Okay, so it's just a, uh, we, we got marigolds in here also. Which are just generally beneficial for gardens. They help keep the bad bugs out and bring in the good ones. The same goes with dill. They, um, I think they attract beneficial bugs to your garden. Well, also, I mean... I guess there's another lesson to be learned here is that we take, let's say the seven layers of a forest and we try to apply it as best we can within every garden. So there'd be the overstory, the understory, vine layer, shrub layer, ground cover, root layer, and I'm missing one too. But to, to that extent, we try to replicate that even within the garden. We're at the area where these beds are considerably larger in fact, more than double the size of the ones you saw before. And we're putting them in based on topography. It worked, smaller beds worked where we had them over here and these larger ones still not more than, I think maybe 12 feet long. And in this case, instead of four feet wide, they're maybe four and a half. So the topography allowed us to work a little bit more. So with, with a box that was bigger and made a little more sense for this particular area. Now we do have more of those smaller boxes, although we could have made them considerably larger to my, to my right over here, but I didn't uh, for the sake of uniformity. The electrician in me can't help that. So anyway, um, this box in front of me is gonna be reserved for more summer inspired things, things we're still in the process of working out. But right behind us, we have a series of things that were planted like a week or maybe a week or later after the other stuff. Now at this point, she's gonna show you exactly what is planted out here in these beds. Okay, so in this bed we have more potatoes planted down at that end. I believe they're red potatoes. And at this end we have 
uh, butter crunch lettuce, arugula, and a couple of different types of Asian greens. And then we also planted um, some herbs, marigolds, uh, dill. Potatoes we need to, here in a couple days, we're going to hill them in, which just add more compost to them, and then we'll put mulch over them. So in this bed, we have uh, red onions, a couple different kinds of peas in these two rows, and then we have Russian kale down at this end. So the peas, once they get just a little bit taller, we're going to put a trellis down the middle of the, of the bed for the peas to grow up. The kale is for the little lambs. This is a really good start for us. I mean, exceedingly good. Everything's just bursting out of the ground and frankly, those greens you pulled today were fantastic. It doesn't stop here, folks. Remember, we are permaculture designers, all three of us, me, her, William. We're all permaculture designers, so we're not just gonna prov provide food for ourselves and for our animals just in these beds. We get food additionally from a number of other places. She's been picking wild strawberries out here, which are fantastic. Absolutely aromatic. Anyway, I could, I could write Shakespearean sonnets about these. Anyway, down the hill among those trees, there's a whole series of other things where we will put not only annuals, because we got some of the greenhouse that need to be used up, but also perennial food crops that feed us not just here, but everywhere in this environment. Things that also help us. Things that have been also that we've had an overflow of that we don't necessarily have room for out here. Guess what? They're going to go within the orchard setting. And we're going to find out just how well they do there. And I think they're going to do exceptionally well. So we're getting food from every single place. We're foraging. We're getting it out of here. We got perennial crops growing. We're even putting annuals down there right now. Uh, before you know it, there'll be sweet potatoes also. Anyway, moral to the story is plant anything. Look, if you're home anyway, find a reason to plant anything. Even if you put it in a five-gallon bucket, grow something. Feed yourself at least a little bit. Maybe even grow some herbs. Hope this stuff was helpful. So until next time, this is Billy and Michelle from Permapastures Farm, and we'll see you next time.